Chapter 9 of The Game of Life and How to Play It. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. Chapter 9 Perfect Self Expression or The Divine Design. No wind can drive my bark astray, nor change the tide of destiny. There is for each man perfect self-expression. There is a place which he is to fill, and no one else can fill, something which he is to do, which no one else can do. It is his destiny. This achievement is held, a perfect idea in divine mind, awaiting man's recognition. As the imaging faculty is the creative faculty, it is necessary for man to see the idea before it can manifest. So man's highest demand is for the divine design of his life. He may not have the faintest conception of what it is, for there is possibly some marvelous talent hidden deep within him. His demand should be, Infinite Spirit, open the way for the divine design of my life to manifest. Let the genius within me now be released. Let me see clearly the perfect plan. The perfect plan includes health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. This is the square of life, which brings perfect happiness when one has made this demand he may find great changes taking place in his life for nearly every man has wandered far from the divine design i know in one woman's case it was as though a cyclone had struck her affairs but readjustments came quickly and new and wonderful conditions took the place of old ones perfect self-expression will never be labor but of such absorbing interest that it will seem almost like play. The student knows also, as man comes into the world financed by God, the supply needed for his perfect self-expression will be at hand. Many a genius has struggled for years with the problem of supply, when his spoken word and faith would have released quickly the necessary funds. For example, after the class one day a man came to me and handed me a cent he said i have just seven cents in the world and i'm going to give you one for i have faith in the power of your spoken word i want you to speak the word for my perfect self-expression and prosperity i spoke the word and did not see him again until a year later he came in one day, successful and happy, with a roll of yellow bills in a pocket. He said, Immediately after you spoke the word, I had a position offered me in a distant city, and am now demonstrating health, happiness, and supply. A woman's self-expression may be in becoming a perfect wife, a perfect mother, a perfect homemaker, and not necessarily in having a public career. Demand definite leads, and the way will be made easy and successful. One should not visualize or force a mental picture. When he demands the divine design to come into his conscious mind, he will receive flashes of inspiration and begin to see himself making some great accomplishment. This is the picture or idea he must hold without wavering the thing man seeks is seeking him the telephone was seeking bell parents should never force careers and professions upon their children with a knowledge of spiritual truth the divine plan could be spoken for early in childhood or prenatally a prenatal treatment should be let the god in this child have perfect self-expression let the divine design of his mind body and affairs be made manifest throughout his life throughout eternity god's will be done not man's god's pattern not man's pattern is the command we find running through all the scriptures and the bible is a book dealing with the science of the mind
it is a book telling man how to release his soul or subconscious mind from bondage the battles described are pictures of man waging war against mortal thoughts a man's foes shall be they of his own household every man is jehoshaphat and every man is david who slays goliath mortal thinking with the little white stone faith so man must be careful that he is not the wicked and slothful servant who buried his talent there is a terrible penalty to be paid for not using one's ability often fear stands between man and his perfect self-expression stage fright has hampered many a genius this may be overcome by the spoken word or treatment the individual then loses all self-consciousness and feels simply that he is a channel for infinite intelligence to express itself through he is under direct inspiration fearless and confident for he feels that it is the father within who does the work a young boy came often to my class with his mother he asked me to speak the word for his coming examinations at school i told him to make the statement i am one with infinite intelligence i know everything i should know on this subject he had an excellent knowledge of history but was not sure of his arithmetic i saw him afterwards and he said i spoke the word for my arithmetic and passed with the highest honors but i thought i could depend upon myself for history and got a very poor mark man often receives a setback when he is too sure of himself which means he is trusting to his personality and not the father within another of my students gave me an example of this she took an extended trip abroad one summer visiting many countries where she was ignorant of the languages she was calling for guidance and protection every minute and her affairs went smoothly and miraculously her luggage was never delayed nor lost accommodations were always ready for her at the best hotels and she had perfect service wherever she went she returned to new york knowing the language she felt god was no longer necessary so looked after her affairs in an ordinary manner everything went wrong her trunks delayed amid inharmony and confusion the student must form the habit of practicing the presence of god every minute in all thy ways acknowledge him nothing is too small or too great sometimes an insignificant incident may be the turning point in a man's life robert fulton watching some boiling water simmering in a tea kettle saw a steamboat i have seen a student often keep back his demonstration through resistance or pointing the way he pins his faith to one channel only and dictates just the way he desires the manifestation to come which brings things to a standstill my way not your way is the command of infinite intelligence like all power be it steam or electricity it must have a non-resistant engine or instrument to work through and man is that engine or instrument over and over again man is told to stand still o oh, judah fear not but to-morrow go out against them for the lord will be with you you shall not need to fight this battle set yourselves stand ye still and see the salvation of the lord with you we see this in the incidents of the two thousand dollars coming to the woman through the landlord when she became non-resistant and undisturbed and the woman who won the man's love after all suffering had ceased the student's goal is poise poise is power for it gives god power a chance to rush through man to will and to do its good pleasure poised he thinks clearly and makes right decisions quickly he never misses a trick anger blurs the visions poisons the blood is the root of many diseases and causes wrong decision leading to failure it has been named one of the worst sins as its reaction is so harmful 
the student learns that in metaphysics sin has a much broader meaning than in the old teaching whatsoever is not of faith is sin he finds that fear and worry are deadly sins they are inverted faith and through distorted mental pictures bring to pass the thing he fears his work is to drive out these enemies from the subconscious mind when man is fearless he is finished maeterlinck says that man is god afraid so as we read in the previous chapters man can only vanquish fear by walking up to the thing he is afraid of when jehoshaphat and his army prepared to meet the enemy singing praise the lord for his mercy endureth forever they found their enemies had destroyed each other and there was nothing to fight for example a woman asked a friend to deliver a message to another friend the woman feared to give the message as the reasoning mind said don't get mixed up in this affair don't give that message she was troubled in spirit for she had given her promise at last she determined to walk up to the lion and call on the law of divine protection she met the friend to whom she was to deliver the message she opened her mouth to speak it when her friend said so and so has left town this made it unnecessary to give the message as a situation depended upon the person being in town as she was willing to do it she was not obliged to as she did not fear the situation vanished the student often delays his demonstration through a belief in incompletion he should make this statement in divine mind there is only completion therefore my demonstration is completed my perfect word my perfect home my perfect health whatever he demands are perfect ideas registered in divine mind and must manifest under grace in a perfect way he gives thanks he has already received on the invisible and makes active preparation for receiving on the visible one of my students was in need of a financial demonstration she came to me and asked why it was not completed i replied perhaps you are in the habit of leaving things unfinished and the subconscious has gotten into the habit of not completing as the without so the within she said you are right i often begin things and never finish them i'll go home and finish something i commenced weeks ago and i know it will be symbolic of my demonstration so she sewed assiduously and the article was soon completed shortly thereafter the money came in a most curious manner her husband was paid his salary twice that month he told the people of their mistake and they sent word to keep it one man asks believing he must receive for god creates his own channels i have been sometimes asked suppose one has several talents how is he to know which one to choose demand to be shown definitely say infinite spirit give me a definite lead reveal to me my perfect self-expression show which talent i am to make use of now i have known people to suddenly enter a new line of work and be fully equipped with little to no training so make the statement i am fully equipped for the divine plan of my life and be fearless in grasping opportunities some people are cheerful givers but bad receivers they refuse gifts through pride or some negative reason thereby blocking their channels and invariably find themselves eventually with little or nothing for example a woman who had given away a great deal of money had a gift offered her of several thousand dollars she refused to take it saying she did not need it shortly thereafter her finances were tied up and she found herself in debt for that amount man should receive gracefully the bread returning to him upon the water freely ye have given freely ye shall receive there is always the perfect balance of giving and receiving and though man should give without thinking of returns 
he violates law if he does not accept the returns which come to him for all gifts are from god man being merely the channel a thought of lack should never be held over the giver for example when the man gave me one cent i did not say poor man he cannot afford to give me that i saw him rich and prosperous with his supply pouring in it was this thought which brought it if one has been a bad receiver he must become a good one and take even a postage stamp if it is given him and open up his channels for receiving the lord loveth a cheerful receiver as well as a cheerful giver i have often been asked why one man is born rich and healthy and another poor and sick where there is an effect there is always a cause there is no such thing as chance this question is answered through the law of reincarnation man goes through many births and deaths until he knows the truth which sets him free he is drawn back to the earth plane through unsatisfied desire to pay his karmic debts or to fulfil his destiny the man born rich and healthy has had pictures in his subconscious mind in his past life of health and riches and the poor and sick man of disease and poverty man manifests on any plane the sum total of his subconscious beliefs however birth and death are man-made laws for the wages of sin is death the adamic fall in consciousness through the belief in two powers the real man spiritual man is birthless and deathless he was never born and has never died as he was in the beginning he is now and shall ever be so through the truth man is set free from the law of karma sin and death and manifests the man made in his image and likeness man's freedom comes through fulfilling his destiny bringing into manifestation the divine design of his life his lord will say unto him well done thou good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make thee ruler over many things death itself enter thou into the joy of thy lord eternal life End of chapter 9 Recording by Amy Conger Chapter 10 of The Game of Life and How to Play It This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shen Chapter 10 denials and affirmations thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee all the good that is to be made manifest in man's life is already an accomplished fact in divine mind and is released through man's recognition or spoken word so he must be careful to decree that only the divine idea be made manifest for often he decrees through his idle words failure or misfortune it is therefore of the utmost importance to word one's demands correctly as stated in a previous chapter if one desires a home friend position or any other good thing make the demand for the divine selection for example infinite spirit open the way for my right home my right friend my right position i give thanks that it now manifests under grace in a perfect way the latter part of this statement is most important for example i knew a woman who demanded a thousand dollars her daughter was injured and they received a thousand dollars indemnity so it did not come in a perfect way the demand should have been worded in this way infinite spirit i give thanks that the one thousand dollars which is mine by divine right is now released and reaches me under grace in a perfect way 
as one grows in a financial consciousness he should demand that the enormous sums of money which are his by divine right reach him under grace in perfect ways it is impossible for man to release more than he thinks is possible for one is bound by the limited expectancies of the subconscious he must enlarge his expectancies in order to receive in a larger way man so often limits himself in his demands for example a student made the demands for six hundred dollars by a certain date he did receive it but heard afterwards that he came very near receiving a thousand dollars but he was given just six hundred as a result of his spoken word they limited the holy one of israel wealth is a matter of consciousness the french have a legend giving an example of this a poor man was walking along a road when he met a traveller who stopped him and said my good friend i see that you are poor take this gold nugget sell it and you will be rich all your days the man was overjoyed at his good fortune and took the nugget home he immediately found work and became so prosperous that he did not sell the nugget years passed and he became a very rich man one day he met a poor man on the road he stopped him and said my good friend i will give you this gold nugget which if you sell will make you rich for life the mendicant took the nugget had it valued and found it was only brass so we see the first man became rich through feeling rich thinking the nugget was gold every man has within him a gold nugget it is his consciousness of gold of opulence which brings riches into his life in making his demands man begins at his journey's end that is he declares he has already received before ye call i shall answer continually affirming establishes the belief in the subconscious it would not be necessary to make an affirmation more than once if one had perfect faith one should not plead or supplicate but give thanks repeatedly that he has received the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose this rejoicing which is yet in the desert state of consciousness opens the way for release the lord's prayer is in the form of command and demand give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and ends in praise for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever amen concerning the works of my hands command ye me so prayer is command and demand praise and thanksgiving the student's work is in making himself believe that with god all things are possible this is easy enough to state in the abstract but a little more difficult when confronted with a problem for example it was necessary for a woman to demonstrate a large sum of money within a stated time she knew she must do something to get a realization for realization is manifestation and she demanded a lead she was walking through a department store when she saw a very beautiful pink enamel paper cutter she felt the pull towards it the thought came i haven't a paper cutter good enough to open letters containing large checks so she bought the paper cutter which the reasoning mind would have called an extravagance when she held it in her hand she had a flash of a picture of herself opening an envelope containing a large check and within a few weeks she received the money the pink paper cutter was her bridge of active faith many stories are told of the power of the subconscious when directed in faith for example a man was spending the night in a farmhouse the windows of the room had been nailed down and in the middle of the night he felt suffocated and made his way in the dark to the window he could not open it so he smashed the pane with his fist drew in draughts of fine fresh air and had a wonderful night's sleep 
The next morning he found he had smashed the glass of a bookcase, and the window had remained closed during the whole night. He had supplied himself with oxygen simply by his thought of oxygen. When a student starts out to demonstrate, he should never turn back. Let not that man who wavers think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A student once made this wonderful statement. When I ask the Father for anything, I put my foot down and I say, Father, I'll take nothing less than I've asked for, but more. So man should never compromise. Having done all, stand. This is sometimes the most difficult time of demonstrating. The temptation comes to give up, to turn back, to compromise. He also serves who only stands and waits. Demonstrations often come at the eleventh hour because man then lets go, that is, stops reasoning, and infinite intelligence has a chance to work. Man's dreary desires are answered drearily, and his impatient desires long delayed or violently fulfilled. For example, a woman asked me why it was she was constantly losing or breaking her glasses. We found she often said to herself and others with vexation, I wish I could get rid of my glasses. So her impatient desire was violently fulfilled. What she should have demanded was perfect eyesight, but what she registered in the subconscious was simply the impatient desire to be rid of her glasses, so they were continually being broken or lost. Two attitudes of mind cause loss. Depreciation, as in the case of the woman who did not appreciate her husband, or fear of loss, which makes a picture of loss in the subconscious. When a student is able to let go of his problem, cast his burden, he will have instantaneous manifestation. For example, a woman was out during a very stormy day, and her umbrella was blown inside out. She was about to make a call on some people whom she had never met, and she did not wish to make her first appearance with a dilapidated umbrella. She could not throw it away, as it did not belong to her. So in desperation, she exclaimed, Oh, God, you take charge of this umbrella. I don't know what to do. A moment later, a voice behind her said, Lady, do you want your umbrella mended? There stood an umbrella mender. She replied, Indeed I do. The man mended the umbrella while she went into the house to pay her call, and when she returned, she had a good umbrella. So there is always an umbrella mender at hand on man's pathway when one puts the umbrella or situation in God's hands. One should always follow a denial with an affirmation. For example, I was called on the phone late one night to treat a man whom I had never seen. He was apparently very ill. I made the statement, I deny the appearance of disease. It is unreal therefore cannot register in his consciousness. This man is a perfect idea in divine mind, pure substance expressing perfection. There is no time or space in divine mind, therefore the word reaches instantly its destination and does not return void. I have treated patients in Europe and have found that the result was instantaneous. I am asked so often the difference between visualizing and visioning. Visualizing is a mental process governed by the reasoning or conscious mind. Visioning is a spiritual process governed by intuition or the superconscious mind. The student should train his mind to receive these flashes of inspiration and work out the divine pictures through definite leads. When a man can say, I desire only that which God desires for me. His false desires fade from the consciousness, and a new set of blueprints is given him by the master architect, the God within. God's plan for each man transcends the limitation of the reasoning mind, and is always the square of life, containing health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression.
many a man is building for himself in imagination a bungalow when he should be building a palace if a student tries to force a demonstration through the reasoning mind he brings it to a standstill i will hasten it saith the lord he should act only through intuition or definite leads rest in the lord and wait patiently trust also in him and he will bring it to pass i have seen the law work in the most astonishing manner for example a student stated that it was necessary for her to have a hundred dollars by the following day it was a debt of vital importance which had to be met i spoke the word declaring spirit was never too late and that the supply was at hand that evening she phoned me of the miracle she said that the thought came to her to go to her safety deposit box at the bank to examine some papers she looked over the papers and at the bottom of the box was a new one hundred dollar bill she was astounded and she said she knew she had never put it there for she had gone through the papers many times it may have been a materialization as jesus christ materialized the loaves and fishes man will reach the stage where his word is made flesh or materialized instantly the fields ripe with the harvest will manifest immediately as in all of the miracles of jesus christ there is a tremendous power alone in the name jesus christ it stands for truth made manifest he said whatsoever ye ask the father in my name he will give it to you the power of this name raises the student into the fourth dimension where he is freed from all astral and psychic influences and he becomes unconditioned and absolute as god himself is unconditioned and absolute i have seen many healings accomplished by using the words in the name of jesus christ christ was both person and principle and the christ within each man is his redeemer and salvation the christ within is his own fourth dimensional self the man made in god's image and likeness this is the self which has never failed never known sickness or sorrow was never born and has never died it is the resurrection and the life of each man no man cometh to the father save by the son means that god the universal working on the place of the particular becomes the christ in man and the holy ghost means god in action so daily man is manifesting the trinity of the father son and holy ghost man should make an art of thinking the master thinker is an artist and is careful to paint only the divine designs upon the canvas of his mind and he paints these pictures with masterly strokes of power and decision having perfect faith that there is no power to mar their perfection and that they shall manifest in his life the ideal made real all power is given man through right thinking to bring his heaven upon his earth and this is the goal of the game of life the simple rules are fearless faith non-resistance and love may each reader be now freed from that thing which has held him in bondage through the ages standing between him and his own and know the truth which makes him free free to fulfill his destiny to bring into manifestation the divine design of his life health wealth love and perfect self-expression be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind end of chapter 10 recording by amy conger Chapter 11 of The Game of Life and How to Play It. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. Chapter 11 Denials and Affirmations. 
for prosperity god is my unfailing supply and large sums of money come to me quickly under grace in perfect ways for right conditions every plan my father in heaven has not planned shall be dissolved and dissipated and the divine idea now comes to pass for right conditions only that which is true of god is true of me for i and the father are one for faith as i am one with god i am one with my good for God is both the giver and the gift. I cannot separate the giver from the gift. For right conditions. Divine love now dissolves and dissipates every wrong condition in my mind, body, and affairs. Divine love is the most powerful chemical in the universe and dissolves everything which is not of itself. For health. Divine love fills my consciousness with health, and every cell in my body is filled with light. For the eyesight. My eyes are God's eyes. I see with the eyes of spirit. I see clearly the open way. There are no obstacles on my pathway. I see clearly the perfect plan. For guidance. I am divinely sensitive to my intuitive leads, and give instant obedience to thy will. For the hearing. My ears are God's ears. I hear with the ears of spirit. I am non-resistant, and am willing to be led. I hear glad tidings of great joy. For right work. I have a perfect work in a perfect way. I give a perfect service for perfect pay. For freedom from all bondage. I cast this burden on the Christ within, and I go free. End of chapter 11 Recording by Amy Conger End of The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin if you wish to buy this book as a gift to one of your loved ones, you will find the order link in the description.